Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision in HO scale. Welcome back to the layout, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner, builder, and operator of the layout, and your host for episode 35 of season 2023. And as promised, I do have some more scenery added to the layout, about 30 feet or so. And it's not a lot of scenery because it's basically only three inches on each side of the main line. Before I uh, got going or get going on the lower level, I have to get this upper level done. So I've been spending this last week uh, trying to get some scenery done on this upper level. And as you can see, it's only 10 inches wide. So the only scenery is uh, three inches on each side. And of course the backdrop, which I've had up for a while, though I added some this week and kind of tried to tie them all together. So this basically is what I was looking at doing. This is kind of how it looked before I all started, before it, I started on the uh, scenery, just bare plywood. So my goal is to get that all scenic and also track ballasted. I began work first of all on the West Vaco area. This is the uh, crossover, double crossover control point at West Vaco. And it's kind of like pretty far away from anybody's view. It's at the base of the peninsula. Here you can see I kind of wrapped up the signal bridge uh, so that it won't get any paint on it or anything else that might uh, mar its ap uh, appearance. And I tried to go about a couple of feet on in both directions uh, because uh, that's about how far I could reach from this point. Again, I'm kind of in no man's land there between the uh, at the base of the peninsula. Now, I was kind of worried about the wall. So I, you put this uh, uh, piece of wallboard up that I had laying around. I thought oh, maybe I would use that. And as you can see, I did, didn't really do a good job. And when I was sliding it from one end to the other, I still got a bunch of paint on the wall. So that was a, that was a total bust, but I was able to paint it with some uh, desert sand paint that I've been using throughout the layout. And then I put on some ground foam, uh, yellow grass, and then burnt grass. I also painted here and then I smudged it with my fingers. Um, but <coughs> but uh, paint first, then yellow s grass, fine yellow grass from Wood Woodland Scenics ground foam. And then on top of that I put some burnt grass, fine ground foam. And then some more yellow sand uh, yellow grass on top of that and then I put some coarse turf on top of all that and used uh, burnt grass for that also. Uh, so this is kind of the results. Now one thing as you can tell I have the uh, um, the scenery done here about two feet in each each direction and I uh, forgot to uh, paint the track before I did this. Now you can see it looks as painted right now. And as you can see, uh, still some of the wood showing, but I'm not really worried about that too much. Um, but anyway, I made the mistake of doing the scenery first before painting the track on that section. Uh, so once I realized that, I got my airbrush out and painted all the track this whole section from West Vaco. Now when I did West Vaco I had to be really careful I didn't get any uh, track paint on the scenery which wasn't too hard. I was using an airbrush so I could direct it pretty pretty easily. And when I paint the track, uh, <clears throat> if you've seen previous videos, you can uh, check out the method I use. I do rust first from the side at an angle to get the side of the rails. Then I do uh, railroad tie brown from the top down 
so I get the ties painted brown and then there's some overspray that goes onto the side of the rails. So the side of the rails get rust and then some railroad tie brown on top of that. So you kind of get a mixture of both the rust and the railroad tie brown. So it looks, looks pretty realistic. Now the concrete ties have to be done uh, a third step because then once I get the railroad tie from straight down, then I have to paint it back to concrete color. So that takes three steps. Of course, once I get the once I got the track all painted, then the next step was to uh, go ahead and start doing the scenery right here. If you notice, I put masking tape down, and then I took the backdrop and kind of rolled it up and taped it uh, to the wall so that it would be out of the way. And that worked out pretty good. I was kind of a little worried about what would happen with the um, the, whether the paper would get wrinkled but it was not a problem at all and then you can see I did the same technique with the ground foam and uh, and I started to paint the fascia here the that desert uh, sand color so I was going to paint all this but to be honest with you it just did not look right um, it was kind of contrasting too much uh, with the blue backdrop on the level below it uh, but here you can see all of it done I did not get I got the track painted here all the way this is my goal is to get this all done eventually I didn't get this done here but I did get it done up to this point right here so you can see I do have the track painted, covered it up with masking tape, and then painted it. And I just painted it. I figured if the wall got paint on it, I wasn't going to worry about it. I'll have to worry about that when the, we take the layout down at some point in time. And I probably won't be around when that happens, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, but it looked look pretty good. And here I rolled the uh, the backdrop back down you can see a lot of the seams but I'm gonna pick I'm cover that up with some trees so that actually worked out pretty good I'm not gonna be able to do that on the curve because I there's no way I can roll that up on a curve so I'll probably just take those three down I did have, have a rip there that I'm, I'm gonna be putting the tree in front of you can see the rip right there So it looks, looks pretty good. Now again, this here, I started to paint the fascia. It's just three, two and a half to three inches wide. But it just it just stuck out too much. It was too much of an interruption of the, the blue backdrop. So I decided I was going to paint the fascia blue to match the uh, backdrop on the lower level. So I basically took a uh, piece of the backdrop um, and took it to Home Depot and had them mix up some paint to match the lower level backdrop, the top of the lower level backdrop. Now I'm not completely sold on this blue um, it definitely makes the lower level look better Okay, here you get a good view. So here the lower level definitely looks better with it being painted blue. But um, when I first had trains going on, it almost seemed like the trains were floating in air. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of leave it. I'm going to leave it a blue for now. We'll see how it looks, how, how I get used to it. And... Uh, I'm not sure what other color I would use. And here I'm starting to put some uh, trees in. I added two more backdrops. So now I have backdrops all the way through West Vacal. So I have a total of seven backdrops going from West Vacal here. And these are all pictures taken out in Wyoming. Uh, they're all pictures taken west excuse me, east 
of uh, Aspen in Evanston in Wyoming. And uh, put some trees in there. So it looks looks pretty good. Now one thing, uh, it's kind of to change pace here a little bit. Uh, another thing I did this week was uh, working on some wheels. And I finally had to get around to cleaning the track after a year. I finally started to have some oxidation build up and had some dirt build up to where I had some uh, electrical contact issues. So I uh, went ahead and uh, cleaned the wheels and put some oil on the track and everything, which was fine. But this particular train with the uh, cleaning could not get up the the hill. So that train could not get up the the hill and the helix. And then this train, both of the coal trains, could not get up the this hill going in the other direction. It basically it stalled. Now here it's making it through the main reason these were having troubles was because of rapido cars both these trains have 25 or so rapido hoppers and it's been my experience that rapido makes the worst uh rolling cars on the market now here's uh their uh well cars this is how, how well they roll. They roll terribly. And those coal trains had 25, uh, the 28 <coughs> uh, coal cars with terrible rolling wheels. Now here's a, I think this is a Walther's or Atlas. This is how they should roll. This is a 1% grade down. Uh, this is how Rapido cars roll. I will never buy another Rapido car. I first uh, tried to remi remedy this a, a, a couple months ago with this uh, kind of auger thing that you can put it in place of the wheel set and you can kind of smooth out the inside of the trucks where the point of the wheel sets come in contact with the trucks did not help repeat cup repeat cars at all so i turned to uh graphite this is basically some graphite i got off of amazon uh made for pinewood derby cars <clears throat> but anyway i went ahead and just uh used uh some graphite here i'm trying to get it to come out here uh, basically, I just flooded the wheels with graphite. There you can see it coming out. <clears throat> so I did this. I think I have 58 total Rapido covered hoppers, the rapid flow cover uh, hoppers, coal hoppers. And they're beautiful uh, cars, expensive cars. And to be honest with you, for as expensive as they are, they should roll better. I don't know what's the deal with Rapido, why they can't figure that out. But anyway, here's the improvement after putting the graphite in. So I, you can see the improvement on these wool cars. Well, I did that for the uh, all the coal cars, all 58 of them. And yeah, finally got that to where the locomotives could pull uh, the coal trains back up the hills up the helix and up the uh, major grade going eastbound uh, so that well I was kind of disappointed about having to do that I'm a little worried I'm hoping that the graphite is long lasting I would be really upset if I have to do that every few months hopefully it's a one-time thing we'll see if any of you have any uh, remedies out there uh, let me know here we can see some trains going through by the way uh, you can tell I also put some uh, static grass on there, which uh, looks pretty good. Definitely looks, uh, doesn't look that great from looking straight down at it. But uh, when you look at it at eye level, it looks pretty good. Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't that thrilled with the way the static grass looked. I am going to keep it on the upper level because, as I said, it looks pretty good uh, from 
uh, eye level. But when you look down on it, to me it just doesn't look that realistic. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the rest of the layout. On the lower level, I'm kind of toying with maybe just keeping it as is. To me, the lower level where I have the scenery pretty much done looks pretty good. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. So I was thinking the static grass would make it look even better, but I don't know. Unless I figure out a better way of doing it, um, I might just leave the lower level scenery as is and just use the static grass on the upper level where it's at eye level. <coughs> so I definitely would like to uh, be interested in your comments on uh, the color of the... Uh, fascia here if I should keep it blue or go back to the sand the desert sand color I think the desert sand would make the upper level look better but I think the blue makes the lower level look better um, so I'm gonna leave it blue for a while and I'm gonna do the rest of it in blue also and see how that looks and then maybe change my mind uh, and go with a different color and I'm going to have an operating session this weekend, so we'll see what uh, operators think about it also. So here we have uh, one of the cold trains going in the other directions. By the way, the cold trains now make it up with no problem. No slipping of wheels. Um, so right now I fixed the problem with the... Uh, Rapido car is not rolling very well, but we'll, only time will tell whether it's a long-term solution. Be interested to know what your experiences are on using graphite for wheel, for uh, making cars roll free, for your, your input on fascia color, and then also for static grass. Um, what's your experience on that? What you think? I don't know. Maybe if I mixed up the color a little bit better, it's kind of like a, it's kind of a solid color. I did mix the straw color with a light green color when I did the static grass, but maybe there needs to be different colors on different applications. I don't know. I have to toy around with that. I have uh, replaced some of these trees. Along this uh, line, I have trees for hiding the seams. And you can see I have a scale tree right there, but I have some of the old end scale trees. And I am replacing those with scale trees. I'm toying also with the idea of not having any trees there at all, I'm putting in a telephone line. So wherever there's a seam, putting a telephone pole and where anything else I want to hide on the backdrop, put a telephone pole there. And then maybe the telephone poles, they won't hide the seam completely since they're not that thick. But maybe the telephone poles with the telephone lines will cause enough of a distraction, uh, visual distraction, to where you won't notice the seams. Uh, the trees do a good job of hiding the seams. I just I'm not sure in this particular area of the country if there are that many trees out in um, Wyoming here. Definitely not that many trees in the backdrop, so a little concerned about that. But overall, I was real happy with the way this looks, and uh, looking forward to getting the rest of this done. I'm hoping this next week I'll get the rest of the scenery done here and then uh, looking forward to getting to uh, work going on the lower level so this next week I think I'll b try and do the rest of the scenery and then maybe do some ballasting also we'll see how much I get done all right thanks so much for watching happy that I actually got quite a bit done this week hopefully it'll be even more uh, done next week have a great week, everybody. Enjoy your Sunday, and uh, have fun running trains. Take care, everybody.